Saya, how do you spell that? S Y A. S Y A? Yeah. Oh, cool. Simple. S Y A. What's your dog's name? Lilu. L E E L U O O. Yeah. <laughs> How old is Lily? Um, I'm not really sure. Um, I got it from my uncle. Yeah. Um, I don't really know very much. Kind of a crazy story. Yeah. That one. She looks fairly healthy and happy. And yeah. That's good. Okay, so I'm new at this. He's kind of mentoring me here. So you know, I have notes and uh, there's one that I actually prefer to start with. Let me find that one. <clears throat> All right, so um, based on that question there, uh, or uh, the statement, how did I word that? What uh, is meaningful to you? Yeah, what is meaningful to you? Do you did you already have something that came to mind when you... Um, I'd, I'd say my friends, yeah, because, um, you know, like found family. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Is that a topic you'd like to discuss, found family? Yeah. yeah. Um, just like... It's like... They're not born having to love you. Or having to take care of you, or like, like just care for you, mm -hmm. but they choose to because they they do love you and they like your personality and they and they just like you for you, okay. and you know you don't have to you don't have to like them just because they're your family, but you do because they're good people and like you just you know you find the people who get you and your little circle and then you like and it's just like from like I think it's like one of the most important things in life like top in the top yeah okay. so uh, do you know what street epistemology is um no I do not I don't think I do. uh, well epistemology is the uh, study of how we know things and um, street epistemology just refers to the um, having those conversations with strangers and with, you know as a because sometimes it's easier to have these types of conversations with strangers as opposed to family and friends who already know your mm -hmm. uh, your stance on things and mm -hmm. so uh, what we're doing here is asking questions, uh, gently challenging uh, beliefs, and you know, no, uh, no judgment, no um, expectation for how you answer things or anything like that. Um, I'm not trying to lead you in any direction. I mm -hmm. I want to hear your answers as you would answer. That's cool. Um, and so, <clears throat> is it okay if I uh, take somewhat of a, uh, I, I don't want to say antagonistic approach, but you know, pressing you on your thoughts yeah. and beliefs yeah. to, uh, to understand why you believe the way you believe, why you mm -hmm. think about these things the way you think about them. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. Okay, so found family. Um, I haven't actually taken a good look at the notes that he provided. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, when so you sort of went over this, but how would you uh, define again found family? Um, yeah, just the people that you know, like, you know deep down, like, like in your heart of hearts, you want to, like, spend, like, you, you want to spend your time with, and you want to care for, and you want to love, and you want to just, um, oh, I don't know, like, spend your life with, and it's just like, yeah. Okay. 
person who, who you find and love and have no obligation to love because they're your family, but have but love because, you know, the people we like. Yeah. Um, uh, so the question that comes to my mind I apologize, it seems to jump just way too far into, like I, um, all right, so let's, let's put blood relatives on one end of the scale and found family on the other end of the scale. Um, where would you place your own uh, feelings or beliefs as to, like, how do you, how would you balance that? Is it, is it sorry, taking the extremes that uh, blood family is the most important thing you should never, you know, that uh you and your cousins and your siblings and your parents that's what matters and anybody who tries to enter that circle is you know kick them out there that's your family matters most as opposed to your found family where if your family were to try to uh interfere with them then you know cut your family off where would you put yourself on this gradient? Uh, I'm a, like, I'm a firm believer in take no crap from nobody, even if they are related to you. <laughs> Cause I mean, personally, I've cut a lot of people off in my family who like, just, I don't, they do and say things that I don't agree with. And I just don't, I don't vibe with that. So I'm just like, Hey, I'm not going to, be around people who do that. Um, there are like, they're like people like my mo my mom and my dad. They're like so amazing, and I love them very deeply. And and I don't think I mean they're they're also just like good people. Um, so like with that, I know they wouldn't ever like. I know I I know I wouldn't have to ever cut them off because like I just like n like know them like that. Like I know who they are and what they think like and how they're like on the same level as me with my beliefs and stuff um but see people like I don't know like my brother I feel like well like it's hard to I mean I live with him so it's you can't I can't like cut him off but like if I could I would because he's just like I don't want to chomp it up but there's things like you know he's mean and then it's so it's like but like there's like this societal pressure to like, if like, oh, you just have to take it because they're your family. But, but, oh yeah, sure, you can cut them off if they're your friend. I mean, like other, like there are people who are like people pleasers who don't even cut off their friends. Um, but like, I, sure, I've cut off friends before. Um, but like, I, I, th I think I'm really good at finding like the, the ones that like really you know, are my family, and if, like, someone were to, if someone in my family were to hurt someone in my found family, I mean, I would, that would not be good for them, because I would just, like, be there. Yeah. What would it take to cut off a family member as opposed to a found friend, or a found family? Um, I don't know, because... Are there... Are they different different lines for each? Yeah, because you you choose to spend time with friends. Like you choose that. I mean, if they're like friends of friends, then I guess maybe you don't. If they're invited to something, then you're like, okay, I just have to deal. I guess like compromise because my friends are friends of them. I mean, if they're like really doing something bad, then I'm like, I'll tell my friends like, hey, I don't think you should be friends with this person. As to family, I guess like if you're if I'm going to a family reunion and like. There are people who are like I just don't like. Then I'm like, okay, I just I'm not gonna talk to them, but like, I'm not just gonna not go to things because they're there, because um, you know I'm not gonna like not have fun.
because that thing. Um, like, like my my aunt's husbands, like both of them on my mom's side, I, I don't like them, and they say they've said really rude things to my mother, and I'm just a big like, you don't say bad things about my mom, or or, or like I I hate you, and if you say bad things about my mom, you know, because like she's my mom, like of course. Um, so like I don't I don't. Like, sure, I'll be friendly, but I wouldn't go out of my way to spend time with them. Like, I go out of my way to spend time with my friends. Um, and, I'm, and, and I guess, like, I have a lot of different opinions from people. I, um, so when, like, w like, more than, like, niche opinions, that it's like, oh... Like, a lot of my friends don't like conflict at all, and when one of their friends or something, like, is like, oh, this, and I'm like, that's not funny, that's just mean. And then my friends are like, can you not? And I'm like, I try to, to not, because my friends really don't like conflict, and sometimes they're just, like, not up for it in the mental space for that. And so I'm like, okay, sorry, I'm doing this for you, but it's like, for me, it's like, I just like to stand up for what I believe in. And so I'm like hey, if you're going to say this stuff, then I don't want to, you know, be around you. Um, so it's kind of hard, but um, I don't know if that answered your question. <laughs> sort of. Um, if you were to... Okay, this is a multi-tiered question. Um, what would it... Or what is an example of what it would take to ghost a friend, to immediately cut them off, to ghost a family member, and to immediately cut off with them? Um, yeah, uh, that is kind of hard. I mean, I have, like, examples. Like, I mean, you're such a good girl. Um, like, I have done both, but it it, it is pretty hard, like, I'd say, I mean, I have this friend who he keeps saying not very good stuff, and it's all in, like, a joking manner, but I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna, like, ghost you for a bit, but I, I always end up coming back and being like, because cause he's, a, he's a fun person to hang out with, and he, he is a good person, but I guess it's just, like, with, like, the people, like, the way he was raised and stuff. Um, uh, so I'm trying to, like, give him the benefit of the doubt with that. Um, and then with cutting off, I don't know. I'd say, like, if you do something, like, if you say something really bad, then that, you know, I'd be like, okay, that, we're done. Um, like, that's something that's just, like, so opposite of my beliefs. Like, and, like, in a serious manner, not in a joking manner, then I'll be like, okay, you're not my friend anymore. Um... But it really depends on what. And then if you do something bad, like, and, like, actually do something, then it's like, okay, the, cut off. And with family, they've, I've had family who've said some, like, with friends, you can cut them off. But with family, it's harder to cut them off because, you know, family reunions and stuff, you have to be around them because they're your family. And, you know they're like related to you and then your other family who you do like are are also like them so like if you want to hang out with the family you do like you have to be around the family you don't like um but i mean a large portion of my dad's side of the family is just cut off entirely and i i do not talk to them like at all I, i'm not around them i haven't been around them for years um because they some of them did and some of them condone really bad behavior so you know the me and my family, me and my immediate family cut them off. Um, but I'd say with people like uh, my uncles on my mom's side, um, like, they've said really bad stuff, and I would want to cut them off. I just physically, like, I can't, you know, with the whole, like, because they're there during family stuff. I just don't talk to them. And when they talk to me, I'm nice to them, sure. 
but I don't go out of my way to talk to them because I don't want to have conversations with people who say stuff like that. To what extent are the things, are tertiary things going on in your life, to what extent do those affect your decision whether or not to go? Tertiary. Sorry, um, things unrelated to your relationship dynamic with them, mm -hmm. just other things happening in your life. Um, like if something is going poorly at work and then a friend or family member says something that you deem inappropriate, how likely is are these other things going to affect? I mean, probably, I probably, with friends and family, I like, with outside stuff, you know, I distance and isolate more. And that's just like mental health stuff, I guess. I don't know. But like with like, I guess when you're like not doing so well, you can make more rash decisions. Um, so, I mean, I feel like that would, I, I'm not sure though. Um, how could you see, rather than distancing, engaging with them uh, in a non-confrontational way? Uh, could you see that being beneficial or is there a greater risk of what being beneficial? Of engaging with them, sort of like with street epistemology, you know, asking them questions, getting them to think about what they said or what they did in a non-confrontational way. Um, with a lot of people, like with family, it it just wouldn't be a non-confrontational way because they would see me attacking them they they would view me asking them questions as a personal attack and they would they would wave their voice and then they would be like oh i'm an adult i know better than you yada 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 or like um i've lived learned or like just like you can't like it's not that big of a deal with it like i don't know and then like with with friends, I feel like I could have a more civilized conversation, which is funny because um, my friends aren't adults and then my relatives are adults, but when it comes to family, like, if you have, if you have any difference in, difference in opinions, it always comes out confrontational. Um, but with my friends, I've found that it's just a lot more civilized um, when I'm having conversations with them, like when I'm talking about things that I don't agree with, I, I say, hey, like, I feel like it's, it's funny, but they're much more mature than the people who are, are supposed to be more mature. Um, and would you say that this is uh, why you are more comfortable with found family? because you're able to uh, engage in discourse yes. more easily. Yes, yes, that, that is great. I'm, I'm able to have like really serious, deep conversations with my friends and not feel judged and not feel like I'm being lectured. Because with any family member, I'd, I would feel judged and, and lectured. And maybe with my mom, I would feel like lectured. Um, like even even the the family members who I do like trust and love entirely, I don't even have conversations that I do with my friends because my friends it's like a zero judgment zone and it's like a a just a safe space and we're able to have these really deep conversations without without you know because they're like. If it was my mom, she'd be like, okay, well, this, 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 and I'm your mom, I have to protect you, and stuff, instead of like, we're for your friends, and you're living a life.
and we care about you and stuff. But we, we, we don't judge and we don't force you to do things. Got a couple questions that have not quite been formed yet in my mind. Um, if you <clears throat> how well do you feel like you handle yourself in conversations like your emotions uh, oh my emo uh <laughs> Okay, so, some t like, I'm a very, very passionate person. So, when it comes to, like, rights and, you know, people's, people's rights and people's feelings and, you know, people's lives, um, then I'm, like, really, really, like, I get really emotional about this stuff. Because, like, I remember, like, there was a time that I, like, like, I was having this conversation and, like, I, I, can, I can be civil and I can, and I can debate of course but then when it comes to like people's rights and people's lives and people's business that other people don't that aren't other people's business then I'm like I get really like upset because it's like I you know I get really upset and I I just like it's a really emotional thing for me so like there are things where I'm like I remember this time where I was having this conversation with a, a person, uh, like, he was my old principal, it's confusing at my old school, anyway, he was saying this thing that I did not agree with entirely and, and was not really his thing to say because it was none of his business and it was very insensitive and just bad and I just got so angry, I like, I really wanted to continue the conversation but he just wouldn't listen to me because that's what I found out, people who, people like that don't listen to me, don't listen to the other side, um, and so I'm like, like, trying to talk, but then he just wouldn't listen, and then he said something really bad, and so I just, like, stood up, like, my chair fell over, and then I ran outside and just, and I cried, and then my other teacher went up to me and she said, I love how, like, you feel for people, how, like, your emotions for people. And, and I get like really emotional about that stuff and I'm really very passionate about um, that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah. In what ways can passion interfere with discourse? People don't take you seriously because if you're, it's, it's sad because if you're crying then you care about like it, it, it's known that you care deeply about something and it's passionate. So I don't think that crying should be, don't take someone seriously if they're crying. I think it should be take something someone more seriously if they're crying. That's just not how the world works. People take you less seriously and say, you're, oh, you're just emotional. And it's like, but there's nothing wrong with being emotional, but people still do see things wrong with being emotional and be like, can't take you seriously. You're just like irrational and emotional and you're crazy or whatever. Um, so I, but I do think that it, it can have a big impact if you are emotional because, you know, humans are emotional beings. So it's like with like empathy and stuff. Um, with me, like when I'm having a conversation and the other person is emotional, then I can see their point of view more. Um, but I, I do understand the composed part and the being like put together part that that is also important i suppose i i, I think it's uh, more of like a right time right conversation kind of thing to what extent can emotions be considered manipulative Oof. um when it's when you're emotional for yourself and you're saying like I feel statements, then that's great. But when you're saying like, you did this and you're, you're doing this and your intent is this and you're making me feel, 
and then I, I, I feel like it's more, um, it, it can be more manipulated that way, and, and some people, they don't even in, intend to be, <laughs> they don't even intend to be, uh, oh, sorry, they don't intend to be manipulative, but, um, they just, like, happen to be because the behavior is, but, um, and then some people are, some people know how to use emotions to get to people and to get to people to get people to do what they want. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, do you have any questions for me at this time? Um, yeah, uh, oh, I'm very not good at putting my words together. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know, I know it's in here, but I'm like searching, digging it. What? Hmm. What's meaningful to you? Let's go back. Um. Well, my family, of course. Yeah. My. Uh, go to. Uh, my immediate family, as in my wife and kids. Mm. I would probably. <clears throat> Uh, rank uh, I would rank them above my siblings and parents and that uh, if I had to um, uh, understanding is very important to me Do you have any questions or any comments or? Oh, uh, it's interesting because you started talking about fa like family. Found family. Found family. Okay, so like the difference between your, your the family that you choose, which is like your friends and stuff, mm -hmm. and the family that you don't get to choose, right? Family that you're born into. Uh, there's a there's a video that I got on my channel that talks about or that asks the question: Should we give family a pass just because they're family? And that kind of reminded me of that. Is that is that kind of what you were talking about before? Yeah. Uh, my my thing is like, I don't think family should get a pass just because they're family, because they're still people and they still affect your life, um, and you should not associate with people who you don't agree with and well like but yeah who like hurt you and to say things that are hurtful what's the strongest argument you've heard in favor of that view that family should get a pass um, just because they're family i'm not sure i don't um probably like uh uh like thing that everybody uh argument that everybody says for even people who aren't family like they can learn they can change and then like their blood family's family family blood's thicker than water family is the most important thing ever um so that. why do you think that's not a good enough reason to think that because it's a chance like you're just born born into this and you don't have a choice on whether or not, like, these people, like, care about you or not, because that's, that's their thing, like, you just, some families don't care about their other family, or they don't, or they say things that are hurtful, and they're like, you gotta be with me still, because we're family, um, but it's like, uh, kind of like, put yourself first, and don't tolerate like bad things just because they're family. Can you think of a situation where you would treat family differently just because they're family? Um, if they, if they 
do things that are inappropriate and say things that are inappropriate or do or say things that are just like rude that I'm like sometimes I call them out sometimes I'm like I just don't want to talk to them and I just like I walk away um that's fun yeah did you enjoy it yeah thank you thanks for participating Saya yes S Y A cool thanks so much I'm gonna remember that if you want to check out the channel, you can scan that QR code. What was your dog's name again? Lilu. Lilu. Cool. Yeah, thanks again. Want to talk about there next time? And I have sunscreen if you need it. I probably do. <laughs> I'll, I'll go get it. Uh, I was thinking, go? now might, or uh, after this discussion, might be a good time to. Uh, wrap for the afternoon and maybe we can come back in the evening okay uh, either this location or another location but oh, yeah sounds good um take a break yeah yeah get some food and yeah. um i might check in on stuff trying to decide if i uh how important it would be for me to go help that friend with moving boxes today or if if tomorrow's going to be anyway yeah. that can be discussed later. whatever you gotta do um as for this discussion um I, it was admittedly a lot more like a conversation than a uh, you know an inquiry um i didn't feel like i got as deep with questions as maybe i could have um, <clears throat> I don't, so I don't have these questions memorized, and uh, when I think about turning to these questions, taking the time to find a question to ask, it takes away from the genuineness of of the discussion and so I'm uh, thinking I ought to spend time uh, memorizing these questions a little uh, making them a more natural part of the process um, Memorization? Yeah. There's so many different directions that you can <laughs> go in any, in any given topic. It's like a choose your own adventure type thing. Yeah. yeah. And I wouldn't want to... Like, there's a problem with just listing off questions. Yeah. Because you're not actually getting to anything. You're you're just <clears throat> do you think it'd be more helpful to memorize questions or to practice formulating the questions that you're actually interested in asking those would imprint on me better yeah that it would um Do you think this is helpful? Like, oh yeah, coming out and practicing. And... Absolutely. Okay. I, I I always prefer learning by doing. Mm -hmm. um, second best thing is learning by taking copious notes. <laughs> and you like to write. Yeah. So. Um, What uh, is there a question now that you're done with the conversation with Saya? Are there any questions that you're now thinking of that you wish you would have asked? No, I kind of ran out of questions. 
uh, most of so as a writer, <clears throat> um, uh, like screenplays, for example, I will often let the conversation move itself. Mm -hmm. You know what a character says, how it's worded is going to influence the response. Mm -hmm. And if it's not, then the, you know, it's obvious that the, um, that the other person wasn't listening to the character or has an agenda. And that can be useful in screenplays, but uh, it, it doesn't build rapport, it doesn't, it doesn't help the conversation flow. Mm -hmm. um, so, striking the balance of familiarizing myself with what I want to be able to say, um, appropriate ways to guide the conversation, Um, without pigeonholing it. Yeah. yeah, it definitely takes practice. Um, sometimes we can get distracted by the topic. Um, and that can go both ways like you could be distracted because the topic is so weird or the topic is so benign that you get distracted yeah you know it, it can it can work both ways and i guess i don't know if i have any advice i guess if i had any advice i'd i'd maybe think about what you're genuinely wanting to know what you're trying to find out, what you're curious about, and developing kind of like what we were talking about before with this with this question about how important it is to to have your map align with reality. Um, formulating the questions that you're genuinely curious about, because. Sometimes there's questions that you're going to have to ask that's going to set up that question, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I always want to get to the question of why is this main reason you have a good enough reason to support the confidence that you have? Yeah. So part of the, one of the problems I realized is that we came to a topic but not to a claim mm -hmm. in this last discussion. Uh huh. And um, having a claim really would have helped to uh, to formulate questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even if even if you're not aware of what the claim is, as long as there is a claim, it makes it a lot makes it a lot easier, I think. Because then. The questions can surround the reasons that support the confidence in the claim, right? And so, like, if if you want to know why the reasons are good, the questions can the, the questions that set up that main question you have. You, in order to talk about the confidence, it would probably be a good idea to know how confident they are, right? And like what the main reason is that, sets, that supports that confidence. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it just takes practice. Um, but, I mean, as long as you're enjoying it, having a good time, and, and learning, and connecting with people, and mm -hmm. coming to an understanding, you know, um, there's lots of different goals you can have. So, I'm just stoked to be out here and doing this with you. Uh, yeah. More shade next time. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> well, we originally were in the shade, but that's yeah, that didn't last long. That, that's how it goes.